In this video, we're going to be solving for the displacement of some vehicle given an initial velocity and acceleration under time. The problem reads, a car accelerates from 5 meters per second at a rate of 4 meters per second squared for 5 seconds. How far does the car travel in this time? So as always, we're going to start by writing down our givens. In this case, we know the initial velocity of the car is 5 meters per second. We are told the acceleration is 4 meters per second squared. And we know the time interval that this occurs over is 5 seconds. We are looking for a displacement. So at this point, what we'll do is we'll go to our reference table, and we'll see if we have any equations that match uh, our givens and unknown. And lo and behold, we do. We have an equation that says our displacement is equal to an initial velocity times time, plus one half the acceleration times the time squared. So now we're just going to plug and chug. Putting five meters per second for our initial velocity. Our time is five seconds. We add that to one half our acceleration of four meters per second squared times the time squared. I want to make a note quickly about what this is that's going on. Um, right here, this initial velocity times time, uh, clearly velocity times the time is going to give us a distance. Now, why does an acceleration times a time squared give us a distance? The first thing that we're doing when we multiply an acceleration times time is we're finding some change in velocity. Okay, so then when we do that, we multiply again because the velocity times the time is a dis or is a displacement. But because we were changing our velocity, we need to take the average. That's where the one half comes from. To make the math easy here, um, I'm gonna start by continuing to write down my one half. I'm gonna keep the four meters per second squared. And then I'm going to multiply by 25 seconds squared. So I've squared the five seconds. Okay, and then it's easy to see the seconds squared cancel out and we're left with meters. So now we're left with 25 meters plus uh, one half times four is two times 25 is 50 meters. So finally, our displacement is going to be 75 meters or the distance we travel. So for anyone who doesn't like doing it that way, we can solve this problem uh, in another fashion. What we can do is we can find our final velocity and our average velocity, and then use the average velocity to determine our displacement. So we know that our final velocity is going to be our initial velocity plus the acceleration times time. Again, this acceleration times time, what it really means is a change in velocity, okay? So five meters per second plus four meters per second, uh, I'm sorry, four meters per second squared times five seconds. So now we find for our final velocity, 25 meters per second. Now we can go ahead and solve for our average velocity which is just going to be our final velocity plus our initial velocity divided by two. Plug in our values. Of course, five plus 25 is gonna give us 30, so it'll be 30 meters per second divided by two. And we will go ahead and find that our average velocity is going to be 15 meters per second. So now we uh, use a formula that we're familiar with, which is going to say that our displacement is equal to our average velocity times time, or it's going to read that our distance is equal to our average speed times time. And we go ahead and plug in our values, uh, 15 meters per second times our five second time interval. And again, we're going to find that we travel 75 meters in that five seconds.